Okay, exciting freaking day. Uh, this is my first time seeing the new chassis. Uh, obviously, Alec went and picked it up. I was busy snowboarding, so thank you, Alec. Thank you, boys. I think this little guy helped him over here, too. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, my first time seeing it. Holy crap. I mean, like, I came in and literally was drilling over it, but yeah, now first time talking about it. This is by far uh, exceeds expectations times 10. Like, Hector did an absolutely amazing job painting this. Every surface is glossy. Every freaking surface is glossy. Let me say that again. The bottom of the door bars, glossy. Up in here, that's glossy. Underneath in the battery box, yeah, you guessed it, glossy. Insane, insane. Underneath here, better than most exterior paints on most cars out there. It's insane, so freaking nice. All the frame rails. So, now is the time. I need to make a little bit of room here. Boom, boom, boom. And gonna start transferring stuff over. That's why this has kind of been sitting the way that it is for the time that it has been, uh, because yeah, it's time. I'm gonna start mounting all the little boxes and PDMs and expansion hubs and modules and all that stuff. It's a lot of drilling and riv nutting, and then I'll start transferring the wiring over. So kind of gonna do that one at a time, do my best to mark these expansion hubs where they need to be, and go time. Okay, this is the situation. This wiring has been in this car since we built it. So yeah, like five years. So it is a bit of a cluster, only because we like added things, subtracted things, do this, like these got um, different lengths. So it's just, it's not as good as it could be. So uh, all the wiring is super nice. It's just routing. I just need to spend some time clipping zip ties, understanding where things go and um, figuring out how I'm gonna route them because like added these, you know, like this is the light for the bell housing from Wolf uh, Motorsports Wire, uh, all the suspension light, like that was all added on. Added a bunch of sensors from AIM, so that's like pulling cables, that was all added on. Different GPS and different camera, that was all added on. So there's definitely some stuff, there's some cleanup that can happen and I'm just gonna spend some time doing that now and clipping zip ties, labeling things. I kind of already labeled up here just in case they need to come disconnected. But yeah, I just need to do some, some figuring and some sorting and see how I can route all this stuff better. Oh yeah, these things too. That was like a USB-C for the GoPro, so it has constant power and the camera for Formula Drift, constant power, so they just add, 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 add. I can't wait to simplify and organize. One of my favorite things. Okay, time. Taping up the door bars to protect them. Got the old harness completely out. Separate it into three. There's a data harness, the, the AIM data harness that has all the sensors, shock potentiometer, steering angle sensor, all of that. Um, then have the like the engine and chassis. You know, like this is the, the engine loom, and then it's I just kind of left it plugged into the chassis loom. Then you have battery cables, like all the, the main cabling stuff. Then I have um, this is where the USBs all connect and connect to PDM and whatnot. So all that stuff is kind of intertwined, but out of the car, finally. Oh, and then we also have like the EGT harness. That's another thing that's gotta be separate. Uh, yeah, so tape it up. And then we're, first thing we're gonna do is start drilling bulkheads. All the bulkheads here, transfer the marks all over, boom. Okay, all of the bulkheads are drilled. Boom, boom, boom. So we can put this wiring away. Now we are working on the battery bulkheads. So the other bulkheads are for, are for the like wiring, headlight, sensors, that kind of stuff to pop through. Like these, these really cool quick disconnects. And then now we're gonna do these, which is for the battery cable. So Alec is doing one right on the inside. That is this guy right here, which is actually a ground pass through. So the grounding technique that we do is 
thing is called star point grounding where everything grounds to the same place. So the engine grounds to that bulkhead, the ECU grounds to that bulkhead, that bulkhead then, because the ECU's in there, that terminal point, like everything will land on that and go all the way back to the battery basically. So everything grounds right where the battery grounds, all in one area. Super nice. There's a couple of things like fans. We have a short ground that will ground up here. You know, a couple things like that. But all the important things, battery cables, sensors, ECU, all that stuff grounds the same place. Uh, obviously this is a positive one. So I'm gonna be installing these ones in the firewall. Really cool, these things, it comes with nuts to pass through and it mounts bulkhead basically to the firewall. Right here. Boom. Then you just run the power right through the firewall. No grommets, no nothing. Screw grommets. <sighs> Wiring bulkheads done in here and in there. Silicone seal done. Going to do the main harness bulkhead here and then start working on the brake line. Got some more bulkheads in. This is the front brake line T, so it comes from the master cylinder to the bulkhead and then to each front brake line. Got the main engine harness bulkhead done. And then we are laying out the rear. One's foot brake, one is hand brake. These T's here with some bulkhead washers. Always nice with the washer so you can crank it down and it doesn't screw up the paint. Update for everyone. Uh, I've been literally in the car for two days now, getting the wiring put in. Uh, so I've just been focusing on that. There's not a whole lot to show, honestly. I'm just sitting in here, clipping zip ties, running this. No, I don't like that. Let me rerun this, 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 this. So it's pretty much laid uh, generally directions where it needs to be. Got all the, got the ECU mounted, the PDM mounted, and the AIM expansions mounted. Um, EGT box mounted here. Firewall bulkheads are all connected. This bundle of wire all runs to the firewall. So. What we need to do now is get ready for mounting the firewall. Look at that freshy roof, dude. Raw carbon. But I was waiting for a couple of firewall pieces. Yes. These corners right here, because what you do to get these corners, put them up in the inside, mark exactly where your tube is gonna go through, and then you cut it and then you mount it. It makes life way, way better mounting this. So here's sort of how this is gonna work. Like Matt said, these caps go over the corners and then we sort of have to uh, put a hole in there for where the down bars go for the cage. When we had this thing test fitted in the chassis, I made this rough template, which works for both sides. But, you know, rough oval, some marks to show you where they should go. What I'm gonna do is tape this into position with the register marks that we have there. Then I'm gonna throw the cap on top of that, uh, draw a little circle on the back side, and then we'll cut them out. And hopefully that works. Further along in the firewall process, uh, today Alec actually seam sealed all of these pieces in. These are the, the cover pieces, so you can see from inside how we did it. Just slice a piece of carbon that's uh, like basically a, a mold of the inside of the firewall, rivet it in, seam seal it from the front and the back, and literally it disappears when you stand right back here. Looks so good. Next step is getting the firewall assembled with all of the rivet nuts and everything that mounts to it. So, mounted the nitrous holder here, mounted a bulkhead. Ooh, let's see. It's yeah. cut for the old one. Well, it should be the same. Remember, it was against the radiator. This is a, a jump point, so your, the battery charger will have the same block that goes right down to the battery. Inside here, getting the PDM mounted, but what we need to do is get these firewall bulkheads drilled uh, for the wiring. But what we need to do is figure out where the nitrous bottle goes and then make sure that these get placed accordingly. So we did move some stuff down a little bit just to help with the clutter. So I need to put a nitrous bottle in and really see where these holes are before we drill it. I think I've gotten to the point with the wiring where it's time to drop in the plumbing uh, because all this is zip tied together, ran where it needs to go. Most of the lengths are set like on the firewall side here. Got plugs and all kinds of mounts to keep them organized. Same thing over here, steering column, dash display. Looking pretty good. 
Uh, but yeah, time to drop some plumbing in. So I'm gonna drop in this Part Shop Max handbrake, and this is actually one of the newer styles with a thrust bearing in there. So I'm sure some of you guys over time, every handbrake that I've ever used gets a little bit floppy, but this is a huge upgrade. We tested it last year on the demo car, no issues. So if you guys have it, you can call Part Shop Max, hit up Tommy and get yourself a thrust bearing handle. Much better, just newer. So I'm gonna bolt this in, and then I have my plumbing right here that I can run to down the trans tunnel to the bulkheads. Let's get to it. Something for you guys to remember when you're setting up your handbrake for the first time, I always back this, uh, like the stop all the way out and make sure when the handbrake is fully bolted in that you have some play on the master cylinder. You want just a little bit. You never want this to be loading that. See how I can load the master cylinder? Not good. You want it to have just a little bit of play and kind of just touch that. Cause you can actually like be squeezing the calipers a little bit and overheat a bunch of stuff. Okay guys, I have, this is my parking brake basically. I added it last year going to be transferring over to new car, going to change the plumbing just a little bit. I came out down before and now I'm going to go straight across because of how I rerouted the wiring. But this thing is super sick. It's 10 by one uh, metric, like crush washer needed fitting. Convert that to dash three and it's simple just on off. And what I do is I hook it up to the rear brake line. So the rear brake line swoops around and then comes in here. So you step on the brakes and then close the valve. So you don't need like to pull the handbrake and close the valve. You don't need multiple hand. Step on the brake, close the valve. So sick. Sick. So this line runs down the trans tunnel into the on off valve and then to the rear bulkhead. And up here, I can explain to you a little bit. Um, this is for the brake lights. This is like the on off switch right here. Uh, brake proportioning valve for the rear brake lines and then rear brake pressure sensor that reads brake pressure after the proportioning valve. So on this car, we have brake pressure for front brake, rear brake, and handbrake. Boom, there's the handbrake pressure sensor right there. Definitely makes dialing in the brake pressure, like if you want 60, 40 split, whatever, whatever, it makes it so much easier. And then also you can see if you ever have a leak or you have an issue. And it's nice too, because you, I can see using the handbrake too much, not enough. I think that it's locking up, but it is, but it isn't, whatever. So it's nice to have the data. Basically done with uh, the engine bay wiring. So I did a little zip tie in, moving some stuff around, grounded. And these are uh, the bulkheads from inside the car. This is for the work lights. This is for the aim, like all the data sensors and everything. And then this is for that, what actually runs the car. The water pumps, the fuel pressures, that kind of stuff. So that is laid in here. And you can see, based off of where the wiring was, how much we cut off the front end, a lot. So I'm excited to get that back here. Um, I took the fuel pressure regulator off and put it over there because we need to rebuild that and the fuel system. So I'll get to that pretty shortly. Needs a new diaphragm, new pumps and all of that. But I think I need to just like stop doing wiring for a, just a little bit. Gonna go underneath, put all the gold foil on the bottom of the trans tunnel, the temperature stuff, because then I can put the fuel lines in and then I can finish the wiring, which you see dangling and clean up this giant mess of zip ties that I've just been adding to and adding to and adding to. So raise the car up, clean the mess, put some gold foil and kind of move on from there. Alec is just about done with the foily tape underneath. I just went and grabbed the fuel lines. So it's actually hard line in the middle of the car running down the trans tunnel and then just a bit of soft line to the tank and to the pump on this side. Then those bulkheads kind of come up in here. Almost done with this. Nice. I'm gonna clean the fuel lines and get stuff ready because we've got a couple of rib nuts for some P-clamps here. Be ready to put it on. Well, we're under here. I figured I might as well get some battery cable sit stuff situated. So you can see I just peeled the tape. So this is raw because the battery goes here and the kill switch bolts right here. And yeah, this is the, the whole kill switch right here. CarTech battery isolator. 
has wiring that goes to the buttons both in the car and by the front window. And this is it, it just lifts the ground. Solid state relay, you push a button, it lifts the ground, then the battery has no ground, kills all the power on the car. Super nice, super small, don't have that big clunky thing with all the positive power cables running around in the car. Bolt that sucker up there and then it attaches right to the battery. Then this is my grounding point, so all the other grounds come here so it all lands on the same plate that the car tech does. Makes grounding very nice. Like that, uh, the battery bulkhead right up in there. Boom, that's it. So everything in the inside of the car all will run back to the same point right here. I'm gonna put it in. Gonna start putting the rear brake lines in and add any rib nuts that we need because these kind of run uh, right above the fuel lines that I noticed. Already labeled, labeled these, driver's side. And what I do is I run a green zip tie, neon zip tie on all the handbrake lines because you can see here that's for the handbrake handbrake so they're all labeled with the green like the green all touches and then even on this side of the brake line that'll have a green zip tie so you just don't even need to think about it super nice that all the plumbing's already built obviously right it takes so much less time throw it on here match up the zip ties throw it on here match up the zip ties and you're pretty much good to go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Thread that in, but yeah, look at this guy. So freaking nice. Quick disconnect, just makes pulling the gearbox so much easier. Uh, you, Cause you basically pull the exhaust, pull the torque tube from the front, disconnect the shifter, upper control arms, all the brake lines. Boom, boom, boom. Whole transmission, drivetrain, everything comes right back down. I'm gonna hook up these lines. Got to do a couple of uh, rib nuts or the, the same tabs that I was using for the wiring. Gonna do a couple of those and then tighten everything up. Brake line plumbing all done and tight. Got to put the fuel feed in. Uh, yeah, that actually needs to be like one of the first things that goes in because it sits up in here. So before we put any of the fuel lines and any of that in, got to put that in. So I think this is the one, this is the hardest one. This is the connector drawn right here. Yeah. Where's oh no, right there. There's a connector, John. Oh, that is. Yeah, and that. And then this. And I think this has to go in this way. Pretty sure. There we go, got it. It's a very specific way that it has to twist to get in there. But yeah, that one is in. Then we put the other side. Yep, this guy in with the clampy. It's good to go. And then this one, get this out of the way. This one snakes in here and then basically goes right into the top of the tank right there. And we put our silicone coupler between the two. I just rebuilt the fuel pressure regulator with one of these sweet rebuild kits from Aeromotive. Bolted it up to the firewall here. P-clamp in those fuel lines. Uh, so it'll actually come out, feed the fuel rail from the front, and then uh, return back here into the regulator. God. Just gonna hook up a couple of fuel lines, finish up heat clamping, and we'll be good to go with this. Currently, Alec is putting in the new Safecraft fire suppression system. Cable is ran, you see the handle up there. I like the mechanical pull levers, just less electronics things. I like them, I've been using them for since forever. Getting the lines plumbed up. Water lines are set in there. Uh, and currently I am rebuilding the fuel cell. So all brand new Aeromotive pumps, two 340s and one of their new 450s uh, in tank. So there's three pumps inside of this fuel tank. Uh, it's built by FuelSafe. It's actually an OEM Corvette tank that's had the chop, the top chopped off of it. And they built the fuel cell, a bladder inside of it. I just replaced all of the pumps. They're the old ones. So I'm gonna put this thing back together and put it in the car. And you can see this thing is pretty intricate. So three pumps feed this pressurized surge tank and then out of the surge tank comes the feed and the return and everything. We actually have a pressure sensor here, an aim pressure sensor for to see the surge pop pressure, which is supposed to be around 12 pounds and a pressure sensor up here uh, to measure like the fuel rail pressure so we can see which pump is failing, you know, the feeds or the lifts or whatever. So put it back together. That is a completely rebuilt fuel cell 
with brand new air motor pumps, these old ones. Chilling. Um, need to do a bulkhead for the fuel vent somewhere around here, and then it'll be, we will be ready to put the fuel tank in. So, whew. It's a hell of a fuel system, man. It's a lot to rebuild, that's for sure. Okay, fuel system is done. We'll put that in in a minute. I got some more lines and things to do back here. Adding bulkheads for fuel vents and kind of getting that all ready before we put the tank in. Fuel lines are all dangling, but yeah, goes on. We'll get the tank in and hopefully be able to start putting the back of the car together. I think that's my goal. 